Earth has limited space, and as we have inhabited more and more of it, many species of plants and animals have found there is no longer a spot for them. Most of us are familiar with critically endangered and extinct species, but there is a strange classification between being critically endangered and going extinct. What happens when the entire world population of a plant or an animal is wiped out, but it still exists in zoos, aviaries, farms, gardens, or even pet stores? In today's video, we're going to look at 20 species that have gone extinct in the wild, but that still exist in unnatural habitats. Welcome to All About Nature. On my channel, I try to bring nature-related content that's entertaining and educational. If you like this kind of content, then please consider liking the video, leaving a comment, and even subscribing to the channel. I really appreciate your support. The Alagoas curaçao, a flightless bird native to Brazil's Atlantic forest, was discovered in 1648, but scientists doubted its legitimacy as a unique species because the bird wasn't found again for centuries. However, in 1951, the species was rediscovered, but the population was found to be at fewer than 60 birds. It became extinct in the wild primarily due to habitat loss for sugarcane plantations and hunting, with the last known wild specimen being shot and killed in the late 1980s. Efforts to save the bird began in the 1970s with captive breeding programs. Unfortunately, due to doubts about its legitimacy as a separate species, it was widely hybridized with the closely related razor-billed curaçao. Today, there are only a few dozen purebred Alagoas curaçao left in the world, being found in only two aviaries in Brazil. The hope is that the captive stock can be increased to viable numbers for reintroduction, though for now, scientists aren't sure if there is any wild space available that can support the species. The La Palma pupfish and the Charco Palma pupfish had tiny native ranges, with the La Palma pupfish having the smallest native range of any known vertebrate species. It was found only in a single pool known as the Charco La Palma pool in northeastern Mexico, and the total range of the species was only about 10 square meters. The Charco Palma pupfish inhabited another, slightly larger pool. Two other species of pupfish lived in two other nearby pools. And sharing the pools with these fish was a small, undescribed species of crayfish and two species of aquatic snails. In 1994, the small pools these animals lived in were all destroyed. These springs where the fish lived were in a very arid environment, and they were exploited by local communities for indiscriminate water extraction. Two of the species of pupfish, the crayfish and the two snail species, all went extinct. But the La Palma pupfish and the Charco Palma pupfish were lucky to have been collected for the aquarium trade. Today, they can only be found in captivity. The Christmas Island blue-tailed skink is a species of lizard endemic to Christmas Island, an Australian external territory. In the 1980s, wolf snakes and yellow crazy ants were both accidentally introduced to Christmas Island. The snakes fed directly on the lizards, while the ants ate all of the insect prey that the skinks relied on. By 2010, this species, which was once the most abundant reptile on the island, had been totally wiped out. Thankfully, their decline was noticed in time, and 66 specimens were taken into captivity by the Taronga Zoo in Sydney, only one year before they went extinct in the wild. Today, they only exist in the captive breeding program and in an assisted colonization trial on the tiny island of Pulu Blan in the Cocos Islands. Lister's gecko suffered the same fate as the Christmas Island blue-tailed skink. Also being endemic to Christmas Island, the population declined at the same time as other reptiles on the island due to introduced predators. In 2009, 
43 individuals were taken into captivity, and by 2012, the species was extinct in the wild. Today, there are only 1,500 individuals in captivity, but there is little hope of them returning to Christmas Island again anytime soon, as the introduced predators are yet to be eradicated. Dabri sturgeon is a large river fish that can reach two and a half meters in length. They're endemic to the Yangtze River Basin and the Yellow River Basin. They were commonly fished throughout the centuries, but in the 20th century, the species failed to keep up with how fast they were being caught. In the 1960s, they disappeared from the Yellow River. Then in the 1970s, they began to be bred in captivity. Over time, they disappeared from the lower parts of the Yangtze River before dams built through the coming decades stopped their movement through the river system. In 2022, they were declared extinct in the wild, despite thousands of fish being released into the river system each year. They just weren't breeding in the wild any longer. Today, they only exist in captivity, and due to the fact that they normally rely on migration to breed, they are no longer able to breed naturally relying entirely on artificial breeding methods to keep the species going. The escarpment cycad, or short-leaf cycad, is a plant species that was found in the Chimani Mani Mountains of Mozambique and Zimbabwe. It has a compact size and distinctively short, spiky leaves. Threatened by habitat loss and collection for botanical collections, this species has disappeared from the wild. Only one wild male has ever been recorded, but today it only exists in one or two botanical collections. Franklinia alata maha is a beautiful flowering species of deciduous tree that grows up to 10 meters tall. In 1765, Two botanists that were traveling along the Altamaha River in Georgia noticed some interesting plants with white flowers and a sweet smell, similar to honeysuckle. In the 1770s, one of the botanists returned several times looking for the plants. On one of his journeys, he successfully relocated them, and in 1777, he returned to Philadelphia with some of the seeds he had collected, where he began to cultivate the species. It was named after a famous family friend, Benjamin Franklin. The tree was only ever found in a small area of two to three acres, and by the mid-1800s, no one could find it. The species had gone extinct in the wild. But thankfully, due to the ongoing cultivation of the species for botanical collections, it survives today in over 1,000 locations, including home gardens, botanical gardens, parks, and cemeteries. The golden skiffia is a species of split fin native to Mexico. It was discovered in 1978 in the Rio Teochitlan. Another aquarium fish, the common platy, was introduced to the same river system in 1976, and it only took a couple of years for the introduced species to outnumber the golden skiffia by a factor of 50. By 1996, the species was extinct in the wild, but thankfully still commonly kept as a pet in aquaculture. In 2022, enough of the river was restored that 1,200 golden skiffia were able to be reintroduced to their former range. The population will need to be monitored for five years before we will know if the reintroduction can be assessed as a success. For now, they remain listed as extinct in the wild. The Guam kingfisher is a brightly colored, medium-sized bird. They have iridescent blue backs and rusty cinnamon heads. Endemic to the island of Guam, the species was decimated by the introduction of the brown tree snake, which is responsible for the extinction of at least 12 bird species in Guam. The last wild kingfisher was spotted in 1988. Thankfully, conservationists were able to capture 29 birds and move them into captivity before it was too late. Today, about 150 Guam kingfishers are alive, housed in 25 different facilities around the world. At the time of this video being made, 
scientists are in the process of releasing as many as 15 breeding pairs onto a remote island called Palmyra Atoll. These birds are considered non-essential and are primarily being used as an experiment to study the wild habits of the species in the hopes of eventually re-releasing them in Guam, but only if the brown tree snake population is ever eradicated. The Hawaiian crow is the most endangered corvid species in the world. And of the five species that used to call the islands home, this is the only surviving corvid in Hawaii today. It was declared extinct in the wild in 2002, when the last wild breeding pair disappeared. Its extinction was due to habitat loss, predation from introduced predators, and disease. Conservation efforts led by the Alala Project involve captive breeding, habitat restoration, and disease control. The aim is to establish a self-sustaining population through reintroduction once suitable habitat is restored. Several attempts to reintroduce the species have already occurred, but ironically, the birds often fall prey to another of Hawaii's threatened endemic species, the Hawaiian hawk. And this has led to the introduced birds either dying or being recaptured for their safety. Today, only about 120 Hawaiian crows remain, and due to the lack of genetic diversity, it may be too late to save this species. The Kahansi spray toad was endemic only to a five-acre area at the base of the Kahansi River waterfall in Tanzania. Because of its limited range to this specific microhabitat, the species was highly sensitive to any environmental change. The toads numbered around 17,000 individuals before the Kahansi Dam was built in 1999. The dam construction reduced the amount of water going over the falls by 90% and subsequently reduced the spray the toads required to maintain the microclimate that they inhabited. Within five years, only three toads could be found and two males heard calling. In 2001, 500 toads had been taken from the wild in case the species were to face extinction. But due to the lack of understanding of the species requirements, by 2004, fewer than 70 of those individuals remained in captivity. Thankfully, scientists figured it out, and today, thousands of toads exist in captivity, primarily in zoos in the US. Since 2017, a reintroduction program has been in place but it has failed to find much success yet, as the environment the toads once lived in is just too altered. Despite its name, the Panamanian golden frog is actually a colorful species of toad. Native only to a small mountainous region of central Panama, the species suffered a rapid decline when the amphibian chytrid fungus reached their range in 2004. It was last filmed in the wild in 2006 for the BBC documentary Life in Cold Blood. The filming location was kept a secret, and the last toads were captured and taken into a captive breeding program. Today, about 1,500 live in breeding programs in zoos in Panama and across North America. The species will not be reintroduced until suitable habitat is located that is free of the chytrid fungus. Pear David's deer is a large species of deer that is native to the swamplands of southern China. It's semi-aquatic, feeding on terrestrial and aquatic plants. It was hunted by the Chinese for centuries. In the 19th century, European visitors to China took several deer back to France and Germany to keep on the estates of the aristocracy, where they successfully bred and formed large herds. In 1939, the last of the wild deer in China were shot and killed. Meanwhile, in the UK, British nobleman and politician Duke Herbrand Russell acquired a few deer from the Berlin Zoo. He kept them on his estate at Woburn Abbey, where they eventually became the only surviving stock of Pear David's deer in the world. In the 1980s, the Duke's great-grandson donated several dozen deer to the Chinese government. The deer were introduced to reserves across China 
and now number in the thousands. And of course, they can still be found at the Woburn Safari Park, about 50 miles north of London. The Scimitar oryx is a large species of antelope that was once widespread throughout northern Africa. Due to overhunting for its meat and horns, the population was already low in much of its range by the beginning of the 20th century, with Chad holding about 90% of the global population. In 1936, a single herd of Scimitar oryx was observed in Chad that numbered over 10,000 individuals. But as a result of World Wars I and II, and then the civil war in Chad in the 70s and 80s, the population dropped drastically. Up to 1985, about 500 animals were estimated to still be wandering the steppes of Chad. But by 1988, only a few individuals survived in the wild. A breeding program was established, and the species was declared extinct in the wild in the year 2000. 15 years later, about 11,000 scimitar oryx lived on farms in Texas while a further 4,000 lived in reserves in the Arab states of the Persian Gulf. A number of oryx were reintroduced to a reserve in Chad in 2016, and today they number over 400 individuals, though they only exist through intense human intervention and aid. The goal is to have at least 500 animals living in the wild unaided in order to consider the reintroduction a success. The Socorro dove is a close relative of the mourning and eared doves and is endemic to Socorro Island off the west coast of Mexico. The first problem the doves encountered were sheep. In 1856, the lowlands of Socorro Island were drastically altered by the introduction of sheep and likely had a negative effect on the species. However, this was not enough to drive them to extinction. The island has no native land mammals. And as is typical in these sorts of island ecosystems, the endemic species show little to no fear of humans or other invasive species. When a military base was established in 1957, cats were introduced to Socorro Island, and this spelt the end of the Socorro dove. By the late 1970s, no doves could be found on the island, and in 1983, they were declared extinct in the wild. Thankfully, Birds existed in aviculture, as some doves had been collected for a private collection in 1925. As of May 2023, 156 birds existed in zoos and other collections across North America and Europe. Efforts are being made to eradicate cats and sheep from Socorro Island, so the species can be reintroduced as soon as possible. While the Socorro dove lives on the island of Socorro in Mexico, the Socorro isopod is found only in the thermal waters of Cedillo Springs in Socorro County in the U.S. state of New Mexico. This crustacean has gone extinct in the wild due to extreme human interference and was the first species of crustacean to ever be listed as endangered. The only spring this species lived in was converted into a bathhouse in the early 20th century. Amazingly, the species managed to hang on within the bathhouse, despite its natural habitat having been completely destroyed. Eventually, it made its way into the pipeline that supplied water to the city of Socorro. But in 1998, a tree root burst the pipe, causing a near extinction event for the species. Thankfully, scientists held a small breeding population in captivity. It has been breeding in facilities ever since. Scientists managed to reintroduce the species to the new pipelines that supply the water to the city, and it lives in a few man-made pools. But the isopods have no natural habitat today. Efforts to reintroduce the species are all focused around man-made structures. It's estimated that only about 2,500 isopods live in these structures today. While tigers are technically all a single species, there are currently six recognized living subspecies. The Bengal, Siberian, Indochinese, Malayan, Sumatran, and South China tigers. 
there are also three recognized extinct subspecies, the Caspian, Java, and Bali tigers. Of the six living species, the rarest today is the South China tiger. Considered to be the most ancient tiger type, today this species is extinct in the wild, with less than 150 left in captivity. It was overexploited for the fur trade, being widely known for having the brightest orange fur of all the tigers. It also suffered from habitat fragmentation and the loss of dense populations of prey species. But the main reason the subspecies suffered was from a government anti-pest campaign that specifically targeted the tigers, as they were seen as a danger to human and livestock populations. The last confirmed sighting of a South China tiger was in the late 1980s, with some evidence that they may have continued living in the wild up to 2007. Today, the non-government organization Save China's Tigers, with the support of China's State Forestry Administration, has developed a plan to reintroduce captive-born South China tigers into large enclosures in southern China. The main concerns regarding the reintroduction are the availability of suitable habitat and adequate prey, and the fitness of the captive population. Spix's macaw is a small blue species of macaw native to the dry tropical forests of northeastern Brazil. Their range was extremely limited due to their reliance on the caribera trees for nesting. While the bird was persecuted for the pet trade, much like most other species of parrot, this species was considered to be relatively common in its range, up through the 1960s. But as the population of Brazil began to grow rapidly, and clearing forest for cattle farming became more prevalent, the forest the bird was specifically adapted to live in began to disappear at an alarming rate. By 1990, only one 50-kilometer stretch of the Caribera forest was left in existence, and only one male Spix's macaw still lived in it. In the year 2000, he died, marking the end of the species in the wild. In 1987, conservationists scoured the globe looking for captive birds. Only 15 were located, all of which were descended from seven wild birds. Today, the total number of Spix's macaws stands at about 180. Conservationists have secured the purchase of two large ranches that still contain some of the necessary habitat for the birds. Several attempts to reintroduce the parrots have failed. But in June of 2022, a few dozen birds were reintroduced, and so far, the reintroduction has seemed to be successful, bringing hope for the future of this species. The Wyoming toad had a very limited range. It was restricted to the Laramie Basin in Albany County. As we've seen with other species on this list, having a small range doesn't generally bode well for a species. The toads were relatively common until the 1970s, when a series of factors decimated the population. The introduction of pesticides for mosquito control, fungal and bacterial infections, and habitat loss all became way too much for the Wyoming toad, and by 1991 they were listed as being extinct in the wild. Thankfully, there was a small captive population in existence. Scientists went out in 1989 and 1990 and captured as many remaining toads as they could find and brought them into captivity. To date, thousands of toads have been bred in zoos and conservation facilities, and several reintroductions have been attempted. Small populations can be found at Mortensen Lake National Wildlife Refuge, as well as a few private properties that have introduced the species in an effort to safeguard them for the future. And that's it for today's video. Do you know of any other species that no longer exist in the wild today? I want to thank my patrons, Kasha and Lael. Thank you both so much for supporting my channel. And if you want to see more videos like this, consider supporting me on Patreon. Just follow the link in the video description below. Another way you can support my channel is by liking this video, commenting, and subscribing. I'm on my way to 1,000 subscribers, and I would love to have you along for the journey. Anyways, that's it. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.